overwhelming majority of black people, African and African Caribbean people, are law-abiding citizens. And yes, we may slip at times, but so does everyone else. me and kissed me and said, Mommy, I love you. He was a giving person, very kind at heart. I don't want people out there to think, oh, because he's my child. But he was a friendly person, very, very friendly, would talk to anybody. Oh. At 2 a.m., the phone went. My daughter came and said, uh, Mommy, I've got something to tell you. Don't panic, but Selom has been shot. My son was shot from the back, and it was only one bullet. One shot that killed him. When it happened, I questioned myself a lot. Where did I go wrong? Did I do something wrong? I can't think of anything I did wrong. I did what a mother could do. I've lost people around me, relatives, but nothing, nothing at all compared to a loss of a child. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like somebody put their hand in your chest and rip your heart out. It's, it's, so hard, it's so painful that I wouldn't know how to describe it to you unless you've been through it. Seven of his friends were there. They saw what happened, but nobody is saying anything. I believe the police know who did it, but because they don't have enough evidence, somebody to stand up and say, I was there, I saw what has happened, you did it. The police can't do anything. Their hands are tied behind them. And they have to, the police have to do more to, to, to find, the, to go to the roots of what is actually happening out, out there. Instead of uh, the media picking it up and saying another black person has been shot, it's drug, drug related. I think it's not fair on our young children. <laughs> I was involved in the first ceasefire agreement between the Bloods and Crips to ever take place. And I basically see a lot of young people here in Britain starting to take on a, a way of life that is being abandoned in, 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 in various parts of the United States. The gang culture is something that we have worked very hard to deal with. And a lot of people believe that it wouldn't happen in Britain. A lot of people even told me over the years, over the decade of coming back and forth, working with various groups that it can't happen here, it won't happen here. And um, I saw all of the various pillars being put in place for it to happen. I saw the economic deprivation, I saw the, the breakdown of the families, I saw that uh, young people in the schools were feared by their teachers and in some cases the educational curriculum was, was very racist and not, not open to different ideologies and different human experiences to allow young people from various cultural backgrounds to feel appreciated and feel like they have a, 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 a place in Britain and, in, and, and as a part of the culture. I saw all of these things start to develop.
felt the need to carry a gun because one stage I just got into such such a point where I felt I needed to carry a gun. I live in a, in a block of flats and downstairs there's a, um, a security door but sometimes like anyone could just walk in the security door and sometimes there'll be like two or three boys waiting at the top of the stairs for me outside my own door like looking to do me something you get me and I'm thinking no what's going on like can't be doing this here outside my mum's yard. I didn't know what to do I, was, I felt I was stuck I felt I was in such a hole I didn't know what directions to take because no one's going to help me really. No one's going to stick their neck out for me. I, mean, I don't have no older brothers, nothing. He did voice his concerns a few times why he needed to get away from here. Uh, it's because there was um, so-called gangs after him or boys, I'm not sure. And he felt his life was in danger. And that, to me, it was... I couldn't believe that, you know, it was like, this can't be happening. In this day and age, my son, there's, there's boys after him. For what, for what reason? There's no apparent reason for all of it. When I got threatened with a gun, that's when I decided this is it. Like, it's all long. It's either I'm going to deal with it like, and get rid of the person that's threatening me, or I'm just going to just let it die off in it and just move off. We were trapped, you know. I wasn't working. There was limited things I could do because I couldn't get a mortgage to move out, couldn't get a transfer. And so he built up an animosity towards the area and, and where we live. And it, he, he turned it into anger, I think. You know, um, but my fears now, I don't know if I really have fears. I, I worry about him a lot because he's out there on the streets. I don't know where he is. The only way he contacts me is through a phone, a phone box now and again. And that's it. And it's disturbing to know that I have my son, my firstborn out there, and I don't know where he is. There's not a lot of options out there, is there? If I want to do this, I can't really do it. Like, if I want to do that, um, everything's expensive out here. Serious, like, London is expensive, and we just feel like trapped. Yo, yo. I was waiting on the streets of North, round the corner from the football ground. Tottenham, aka Gangster Town, where the fucks go round. No, but it's Afro's all like Contra, the right side, yeah, repping. Moved to the east side, very young. Still in school, but still wasn't on done when McKenny and stole. I lived in Leighton, who done my ones? Or with Menace or Nathan? Fuck Blayton, North East London, that's my manner. That's what I took with this fuck that grammar. You can find me in Hackney in a banger. And if I blow, I'll still rep my manner. Cause I've got love in the manor Grew up and made a little dough in the manor All my fucks still shotting rocks in the manor Ducking cops in the manor Cause it's hot in the manor in my manor There's still bare gunshots popping off And still bare mans getting burnt then dropping off Cause they still wanna act like they're real But they're phony fake Your best friend he might be a snake Now don't make a mistake and make friends with the snake Cause all they wanna do is eat off a plate And the girls in my ends are still scared So my ends are still banging me My enemies are banging my friends And giving head in the back seat I'm like a whimmer I won't take a bear man I've been up in a in the manor It's the remix, same chorus But the first lyrics have been real People we've grown up with are just like dying, like over stupidness, man. Like, like many people I've known that like, have either died or brain damage over like, stupidness, man. Like. Anything could happen. Any situation could occur at any time. You can just walk into your car, man could try and run up on you for anything. Your phone, your money, for your car. That's how it is, isn't it? Wherever you are, man's gonna roll up on you any minute. You've got to be prepared for it. I don't know anyone that just rolls freely and goes manner to manner without thinking, oh, I'm gonna get hurt because of this and because of that, like. It's not like that anymore. Before you could just roll everywhere, but now it's just got ridiculous. Like. The cheapest gun on the street was what? 152 bills, what? Saw on your phone, you get a saw on your phone. Saw on your The police and the politicians know that. You know what I mean? Don't like that, like, you know. Guns on breast, you can get yeah, out That's easy. why they brought out that crime. If you get caught with a gun five years, because they, they that, understand man. how much guns are on, this, on the street. They know, and they understand know that. that most of them are rebels. It's only top shooters that got proper teams. The that. nines and whatever and the behind them that and start shooting. Besides that, all the kids have got rebels. But the thing is, yeah, all the kids want to be the man, so they will shoot you. No long team, why not? It's easy to get guns on the streets. I can have one here in about half an hour, an hour. And that's serious, just one, two phone calls and it's here. That. Okay, whatever you need, it's there. Silence though. 
machine guns, even fucking, uh, so I've been told, um, hand grenades. Alright, this is the Mac 10. Takes 9mm shells, you know, 9 bits. This is the clip for it. Yeah. Push that clip back there. There's a silencer right there for it. Screw that on. Cock it back, yeah. Take it off safety and it's ready to fire. What other arms do you sell? Three, three eighths, nines, anything. How young is the youngest person you've sold a gun to? Probably about 15, 14. Knowing that so much man them doing kill on the street, don't you feel any sense of responsibility knowing that like you're arming people them on the street and these guns might be used for murders and stuff like that? No. I don't. My cousin had, had, had a fight earlier in the day because another boy ripped his jumper. He started rattling with the boy, he had a fight or whatever, and he thought that was it. He obviously went away, left it, um, thinking that, you know, nothing's going to happen. It's, it's all silly what happened. And uh, basically, I nearly got killed over a jumper or something. You know, basically, when I came in there that night, there was like 30 boys standing up on the balcony, like a whole load of them. I was standing there, and a guy came from around the cars, gassed me in the face, and then um, I looked towards over this way, and then I see the gunman basically come running across there and shoot at my friend's car. When I see all this going on, you know, I basically, you know, took off out the estate, and then I was, just at the bottom of the drive here and uh, I felt a quick, you know, through my back, you know, and I, I didn't know what it was. I thought, you know, I'd been stabbed or something, like someone was running up behind me because I heard footsteps as well. So uh, when I got to about, say, you know, at this bollard, I just felt, you know, the and I was looking at my hand, I was losing a bit of blood and then I came to like in the middle of the road and like basically I was like, on all fours like that, like crouched down in a crouch position. So it was like, I was thinking to myself, you know, am I gonna die here? I was in hospital for about a month and a half. The doctors was working on me for quite a while. I had like quite a lot of intestines removed and uh, you know, it was just pretty horrible. standing up by the escalators. The next thing I knew, there was an argument between um, two boys, two black boys and some girl. And then it looked like the boy was being punched and then I see him fall to the floor. And then um, the they were stabbing him, punched him again. He must have been stabbed about four times. And then everyone ran off and the boy was dead and that was it. He was only 17 and it was just a stupid argument really, over nothing. And he died and that was it. Everybody was there and no one would talk to the police or nothing. And then like the next day, I think for the next week, the police were there every day and they were just like grabbing older people and saying, was you here on this day? They, they're only going to be with <laughs> you while you're giving them the information. When that man's maybe coming back, yeah, because then maybe not understanding the seriousness of what's happening, yeah. Fair enough, there's Operation Trident, mm. but you go to Trident and say that you've seen this crime, yeah. Now, when Trident have gone after taking your statement, yeah, yeah. the witness protection system in this country isn't that much in force that they can safeguard you and your family. Because the thing is, the problem doesn't just stem from the actual man that got shot. There's his mother, his, his yeah, sister, yeah. his yeah. aunt, and blah, blah, blah. And if they can't actually get to the person that's actually maybe done the shooting, they will target your other family. So in a lot of cases, it's actually safer not to talk. Just all over London now, and even out of London, it's just getting terrible. Like girls, the bear man just getting taken off road for silliness. When it comes to the street thing, England is behind, England is late. Is. You get me? It's like, England is late. Now, late England is coming. Soon England is going to be like America.
probably Jamaica, Trinidad, all them place there. England is late. It's just the beginning. England is like a virgin to gangster thing. You know? Definitely. And we all good guys. Definitely. But I'm just saying it out there, everybody know it, man. Any safe to ask me because you must know it wherever you come from around. There ain't no way in London that is cool. No one can say London is cool. If it's cool, it's because maybe it's in, but everywhere it's getting touched. It's like a virus. Yeah. Serious. It's all about choices. It's so now. Okay. It's a you virus. Right Everybody gonna get it. It's all about who gonna survive it. That's all it is. And who gonna die. A lot of girls carry guns into clubs for like their partners and boyfriends and things like that. And I think, you know, you know, they've just they've got to get clued up because they're basic if anybody dies at the hands of that gun, it's their fault. I know somebody that did carry a gun for her boyfriend and um, one time we was in the house and I think I'd only seen a gun once before and um, she put it in my hand and her little boy was in the room and I must have gone like that, like pointing to up and um, must have touched the trigger thing and she started screaming, don't put it, don't put it, it's loaded and I was like, you idiot, I didn't even know it was real, but like, I didn't know it was a real gun. I'm so sorry got... to cut you, yeah. but your stupid friend. Yeah, I know. Right now, I don't and know. Why is that? Is, that situation is so. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No wonder they don't want to help us. Look what we're doing. Mm. And it's do you know what I mean? Like whether it's loaded or not, whether you know it's loaded or not, it's why not is point. that in the face of your child? Never see him again. Oh dear. Cavian was killed in Stonebridge outside Potaton House and he was shot six times. He had a shot um, in his knee just above, I think it was his right foot, and that shutters shattered the foot. And um, he had he had one in his back because it, it looked like when he got the shot he was running so he had one in his back, one up in his shoulder he had one in his chest and I think one in his side in total it was six yeah the police had told me that they held the guy but they haven't got any proof nobody has come forward to say this is a guy that shot Cavian so there's not much that one can do when I was shot, no one was arrested. Um, no one went to court. Uh, it, no one came forward. And there was quite a lot of people there. And that's the way it was. I was shot three years ago. I'd seen the police only once. And uh, I haven't seen the police since. Up till now, up to this day. Um, if that's the way that they're treating a uh, attempted murder case, do you know, what are they treating like a real murder? Nothing much isn't really being done, is it? With all the shooting, the killing and whatever that's going on, you know, there's not much people that's been caught for what they've done. Even like the little girl, Tony Ann, a little innocent child, she hasn't even lived. challenges and there's a struggle. We don't need to fight ourselves, we need to fight the enemy. We need to fight injustice. We need to fight oppression. We need to fight those things that hold us down, not fight ourselves.
Mm. I don't think the media did do their jobs properly. They was only interested in some bad story about my dad so they could put it all over in the newspaper and that, that is what they basically did. They came and they said they're going to offer me money to talk to them and I said no. I wasn't interested. How much money were they offering? They said they can't compensate me for the loss of my dad and my sister, but they're willing to pay me. They didn't really say how much, and I wasn't interested. I need the money, but not like that. <laughs> All they had to say about my dad was he's been in prison and everything bad. They don't really try to get anything good. They never yet write, oh, he's a good father. The day before they died, he went to get Tony and school clothes for her to go to school. Nothing like that. They're just saying, oh, he was a drugs dealer, he got shot, re, re, re. It doesn't make sense. To me, the media over here, the only... Their only, just for, mostly for white people, I should say. <laughs> Black people cannot do no good in this country. Whether you're trying to do good, yes or no, they never see the good that you've done. They only see the bad side of it. If a, if a woman's purse gets stolen, it was free black use, and that fits the, the perfect picture. That's the three um, black boys that are walking home from play, probably doing, like, you know, homework. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they just happen to be walking and down this targeted. road where yeah. an offence has happened, and they've just been targeted, and, like, there's nothing they can do about it. They're going to be searched. They're probably going to get arrested. Their homes are going to probably be turned over. Do you know what I mean? And it's just not fair at the end of the day. Like, the police have got no respect for the young black youth. They stop and search them, they harass yeah. them. You'll see one young black boy standing up, maybe 14, with 15 men, with 15 policemen standing around him, antagonising him. Nah, he's not really going to grow up and have respect for the same people that antagonised him as a youth. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you walk, you'll see police stopping young black boys. Yeah. You can't be a black boy maybe riding a bicycle with a cap on late at night with your yeah. hood on. You can't be in a car. You can't be in a car. Because a robber with a cap on a hood on. <laughs> <laughs> Without being stopped yeah. by the police. That is so true. And yeah, yeah, it's true. That's a violation of your human yeah. rights. Yeah. It's yeah. taking everything from you. It's embarrassing yeah. to be stand, standing up on the street with all these people walking past and you're standing up there and they're patting you down. And there's five of them around you. It's horrible. It's not nice. They're not and really going to. They lose respect for the police and like because they're the antagonised no a lot. Longer, like you know what I mean. Youth are not going to not do things. Because the thing so, is, like, it's not as if they're not only going to them for murders. Most black boys, if their house got burgled, they're not calling the police either. Yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. happy with you taking their things, so yeah. long as that man doesn't walk through <laughs> it. Black people do not have confidence in the police. <laughs> When I was 15, I could have gone two ways. One was the way with nothing my bridge and going out doing armed robberies and stuff like that. I could have easily been in that life. Some of my friends, my good friends, male and female, spent most of their 20s in prison, most of their 30s in prison, in and out of prison. If the wind had blown that way a bit harder, I probably wouldn't even be doing this interview with you today as Dr. Les Henry. You may be doing it in Belmarsh, behind bars, with a serial criminal, because sometimes it's that easy to walk on that side of the road. Let's think about how the media represents black-on-black -black violence, okay? 
So we had the murder of Tony Ann and her, the seven-year-old girl and her father. We had Letitia and Charlene in Birmingham and the media will highlight them for a few days. But then if you contrast it to how, you know, Holly and Jessica and how their murders were framed out there in the public arena, there's not a disparity. It's representative of the percentage of the community that we are. What our problem is, is for me, for a lot of us, what our problem is, is we really expect white society to put our issues at the forefront in the same way as they do as things that affect them. They're not gonna do it. If white boys were shooting each other proportionately to the way how black boys are, let's say, that would be on the front page of every paper. Until this black on black violence really starts to impact on the surrounding white communities, I don't think much will be done. If you look at things like even the news, Yardi gun crime. Now, half of the gun crime that's going on is not Yardis, it's people that are born and bred in England. Yeah. So the whole perception what society gives of black men is negative. What percentage of the black population in Britain are Yardis? And what percentage of the black population in Britain are Yardis who are into this kind of gang violence? Most of the Yardis I know are too busy trying to survive, maintain and feed their families to be caught up in this stuff. So we need to even think about the ideas of black or the black community that the media project out there. And we as black people buy into it. One of the biggest influences on me growing up during my teenage years was the movie Scarface. Al Pacino ain't black, you know, but this movie helped shape and mold my generation's perception of how to make the American dream come true for those with nothing. Because in this movie, the character Scarface came from nothing and built an empire, you know, and even the craze. You know, I hadn't been to England, but I knew about the craze. And when we saw these individuals get to a position where they had power and in many, in many cases, respect in their community, then we wanted that as well. So in a lot of cases, we took on some of the philosophies and principles that we started to live according to from the things that we were exposed to through the television. And then when it comes down to identifying who's responsible. The first example is you'll hear Soul Solid Crew, Tupac Shakur, Biggie Smalls. You hear about all of the residue of, the, of, of, of what really caused the behavior in the first place. A man starts off life, he starts off broke and poor. Man has nothing. You go out, you see on, yeah, like on TV, you see on TV that people have everything and you have nothing. So then you, you're determined, no matter on what, just to make yourself, not even enough, to make yourself more than enough change. So that whenever you go out, if you see something you like, you got the money, blam. Just say right there, blam, I want that. It costs 100,000, what, 100,000 pounds, you don't care. Just, just drop the money on the table and take what you need to take. You can get whatever you want, whenever you want it. It's TV, like you see cribs in it, like you see people's houses, like all them rap stars, all them black people in it. So you're Bare thinking, raw, like, you get me? And look at it. They, 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 they basically get all just like us. You see it, like, what, we can do it too, innit? Like, we, but there's, that, there's, there's, there's ways to do it. Like, you want a house, you want a car, you want the chicks, you get me? You want to look decent, you want to have clothes, you want jewelry, you see it, you see it, ice. When you go raving as well, you want to be the man with better drinks in your hand. You see it, you always yeah. want to be flossing. So you, ha you have to have money in your pocket anyway, innit, like? So, that's, that's how I say it. it's TV as well. <laughs> I don't know, when you meet a boy, you look at... I don't really go by cars, but it's the, how they're dressed and how they carry themselves sort of thing. And it's not even that, it's the respect that they get. Do you know what I mean? But that's just today's society, because a girl doesn't generally want a guy that's got a broken down car. <laughs> no, it's true. That's all. It's true. You want a man that wears a Rolex, that's got nice trainers, and when you first meet a guy, like you, you're going for his appearance, how yeah, he looks. It doesn't look do you know good, what I mean? That's it. But, he could be nice. but he could be nice, but you know, little little things do help. I don't think like I'm not going to sit here and say I don't like <laughs> nice <laughs> things. The only thing that pisses me off is the fact that once we do get something, 
we behave like we're so not used to it. Yeah. Like we have to have the biggest earrings, the it's biggest where we're belt, from. the, the where you we're know, from, the biggest of how everything. Can you, how can we you take like, that from you us? Know, we're so, like, we're if so you look at it, it, and we are at the end of the day, we have been deprived of it. But I don't think, you know, what I mean, the way we behave, I don't think we always need to. Even if your mum can't afford it, she's gonna buy you them trainers. But exactly, that's where it's all gone wrong. But then it's exactly, not because that. But if, maybe if instead some... of having the best trainers, maybe you should have sent your kid to private school. Like, and maybe that's where these young boys are, are, are yeah, how they're growing up. Private school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if, but if, how, much are, how much are Air Max? Yes. Yes. You don't want your child to go with that. And we have got a lot of pride, so we will break our bro. backs to yeah, give our kids the best. And if that means for black boys to go out on the road and sell drugs and do whatever criminal activity they have to do, they're going to do it to get what they want. Half young people living in an environment that's screaming at them from every angle. Buy, 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 buy. You must have this, you must have that in order to be hip, in order to be cool. And MTV Base showcasing and modeling products, not individuals, products in front of the young people every day. Well, temptation, you know, at this precise stage, temptation can even get me. Even though I'm working, I'm doing a legit thing. Tomorrow I could go outside and someone does something fast to me. Then I have to change my whole attitude towards life and basically put up another attitude just to get myself around, um, get myself around in life. So that I means I'll probably say, forget work, forget this. Because them mans are bad, they're doing this. Why don't I do that as well? Because look, I have to put up a front anyway. I have to go on bad now already, so why not do that and make a little money? All my fucks do shot in rocks in the manner that can cops in the manner cause it's hot in the manner in my manner Cause it's hot in the manner in my manner 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 I right, right. right. right now. What's up there? Look, it's on the scales then. What's that way? What's that way? Raw oh, dude. You have to tell them though. The B that is there. We ain't dealing with the white thing. That's the B. Look at that. Yes. There, quick shot right now. What's that? Five grand you get from that? We're gonna show you the peas in a sec when the man comes to buy the thing. Don't watch nothing. What's that there on the scales? What's that? Look at your hands, bro. Nasty up. You didn't even know gloves, bro. This is a Grammy B cut up. This is the survival. You're chipping. Nah, just stop chopping and then chop the bottom half and that's it. Mm. Oh, he's a hand on All my fucks still shot in rocks in the manner that can cops in the manner because it's hot in the manner in my manner. Because it's hot in the manner in my manner. One of the things I know from my own research where I've been speaking to a lot of the, you know, the black youths who are drug dealers from say 14 to around, let's say 19, because they've, they've, that's been the kind of sample group that I've been interested in. And for a lot of them, it's their career. It's a career path and choice. They know that they can start off selling drugs for people. Then when they accumulate enough wealth for themselves, they can cut that person out and go to usually the white face behind it, get the drugs, and that way, how much money do they make? It's central, it's central to everything, because the drugs not only support them, or support anyone they wish to support out of it, that is what allows them to buy into this consumerist American dream as well. It's the drugs, the drugs are central. Otherwise, how would they make the money? I've just seen your operation. How much money do you make a week? Well, and I can make Six to seven grand, easy, like easy, easy in a week, like profit. And what would be the average age of one of your soldiers? About 15, 16. The average age, but yeah, 16. And what sort of money would they earn a day? I mean, it depends if they're shot in their own food or if they just get a set wage. Like, you know, like £100 a day. Depends what, what they shot out in the day. If you take a walk from where we are now, in New Cross and go down the road to Deptford, you will see them openly around these little spaces selling drugs, black youth. You'll see them just over the road there as well. Now, broad daylight, selling drugs. It's their business. 
They're there every day, nine to five. They have no future orientation whatsoever. Don't even mention pension to them. That's twice as long as they expect to live. Let's have to protect ourselves from this, the hard day's struggle and that. Like. This is the thing here. It's the 45 thing. You don't know how to get it done already. Big pussy clout thing. There's a killer wire with that. Big, look, look at yourself, look. Look at that in your back. You ain't waking up, you know? Not being all type of man there with that pussy clout thing. So they're 45. Big type of thing. Big thing this, you know? And look at him. It's a daily struggle, we have to protect our life, protect everything. And things that we showed you earlier, that's what we're protecting. You done that? Just screw the thing off. Why is it that a lot of youths are dealing drugs? Because it's an easy way to make money, like. It's, it's the easiest way to make money. Quick money. Think about it. Like, an ounce on road, an ounce of white for 800 pound, chop it up to 10 bags, all point twos. You make 1400 pound, you make 140 stones and sell every bag at a tenner. Can't go wrong. You do the same thing every day, you can't go wrong. How is the government going to get to grips with this problem? How is society going to get to grips with this problem? I think they just have to accept it. Because, you know, like, you can call it, call it a problem, but it's it's the, way, it's the way of life, you know? It's, it's just this sort of age group. It's just that, it's just how it is. It's how it's getting down, isn't it? So what would it take to stop you selling drugs? Lottery, definitely lottery. All the numbers then, plus the bonus pool. Are you being serious? I'm serious when I say the lottery, man. Then what's the solution? And what's, what's gonna take you off street? Is it a bullet in the back of the head? Or is it jail? The jail thing don't make man wanna stop doing things it's just greed it's money in it like i don't know i think our sort of age group have been conditioned in this certain way like we just want material things like i don't know i can't explain it. it's mad you just just get addicted to the hustle you just want to do it you know you just want money more things more this more that don't you have any sense of a conscience about selling drugs to people i mean you know it, it, it destroys lives and things like that not necessarily, because they were doing this thing before I even hit road. Most of the addicts then were fucked, you know? They were doing things before I even met them, or before even my people meet them. So why should I have a conscience about them doing their thing? I reckon I'm just providing a service. I'm like a doctor. I got the medicine. So if they want it, I get it to them. I've got a good education. I see places like this. You know what I mean? And my family life is good. I've got A-level maths, um, O-level English, O-level physics. My first job, I was a bookkeeper. Yeah. I've been a wages supervisor, finance supervisor, fraud officer for the social. A lot of what I kept smoking is one of my pals got shot standing right next to me. He got shot in a youth centre by a yardie over in nothing. See, I've been doing drugs the same length of time as him. There was a Christmas extravaganza going on in a youth club I used to go to. Now, I've turned up at a Christmas extravaganza and a man's asked me if I'll work on the door for the night because there's been a lot of trouble in the day. So I'm working on the door. Now, a yardie's turned back up who had been arguing with my friend's brother in the day. They've had a big row on the door. I've calmed that down. As I've calmed it down, another yardie's come round the corner and shot my friend in the head. Now, he shot my friend twice. As he's run off, I've dived on the floor for cover. As I've dived on the floor for cover, 
I've seen like half my friend's head missing. You know what I mean? So I was in a lot of shock. I never ever got no counselling or anything like that. And my only way out of coping with it was smoking rocks. You know what I mean, this smoking the gear took away all the pain of seeing him get shot. I started on weed, huh? and then Go. through depression and through life and enjoyment as well. There's not only there's not only um, the bad side of it. To me personally, I used to take trips and even feel good. I used to feel good. I never used to hurt anyone, harm anybody. I used to go out to a rave and feel good, smoke a spliff, well, take, take it easy. You know, the, the, the loneliness of it all as well. This is, this is a group, you can see us in a group here, but I think the loneliness of it all is very, um, it's, it's there, there's a lot of loneliness in it, there is a lot of loneliness. Why I started, I'll say it wasn't the reason, but I, if I sort of analyse it, it is, I had a lot of abuse as a kid, and I think I got into that, so when I had any problems or felt down and that, I could shut it off. Split up with my wife. I went through a, a bad time. She wouldn't let me see my daughter. And uh, I just met up with the wrong people, basically, you know? And that's how I started on drugs. The turnover for a good dealer, right, if he's just got a few customers, he can cane a grand a day, easy. Lindsay, can I get you know what I mean? No, now, at 15, no, I won't even say 15 because I know dealers are 30. Yeah. At 13, if you're paying down a grand a day at 13, you know what I mean? You're living the high life. Mm. Are you hear me? The younger kids that deal, because they're getting younger now, aren't they? And they're all in their little yeah, gang yeah, dealing, yeah, they're all I'm connected, going. right? is because they want to wear their designer clothes, their labels on their clothes, they want the latest trainers, the latest, um, what do they call it? What them Game Boy things, them sort of things. PlayStation. You know, and th that's why they do it. Dealers are getting younger nowadays, yeah? Because what it is, a lot of the older people with the drugs, it starts off, they give it to the younger ones to run the gear in case they get stopped and the younger ones can't get charged. Mm. The younger ones start realising how much money's in it and start doing it themselves. You know what I mean? Most of the drug dealers are black. What? The most, most of drug crack dealers. Most crack is dealt by black people. By crack, yeah. Heroin well, that's not isn't true at always. All. No, that's Heroin. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. Heroin. Can I finish? Who said that? Hold on, let me just say something. Can I finish? And I don't care what. No one's got to say. Most crack dealers are black. In different yeah. areas, different things. Hampstead, they're going to be white, aren't they? No, they're not, not in here. It's going to be black. It is going to be black. Black and white. Hang on. I've lived in Hastings. That's rubbish, isn't it? I've lived in Hastings and I come from Brighton, which is south coast, yeah? Since I've lived in London, yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. But I come from Brighton. I've lived in Hastings, South Coast and all that. And they're not. They're white. Because different there's areas, not that. Different areas, different yeah, areas. Yeah, but London, yeah, yeah, London black, it is, black. mainly. Well, Everyone does it. it does, yeah. Do you know what I mean? All I'm yeah. saying, basically, just it doesn't mean to say that it's just black people that no, do it. Whatever. No, there's mixed even race. Everyone, even Chinese people, it doesn't matter. No, but we're not putting it on black people. All, all walks of life use drugs. Rich, poor, don't matter what colour you are. It can be pink with fucking red stripes. You're still going to use it. But the dealers that you've met since you've lived in London, what is what colour is the majority? You. The majority. Right, Asian. Right, so they've still got dark skin. Yeah. Most street dealers are black, yeah? But the majority of the gear that comes in, yeah. it comes through white people first. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? It's all about money at the end of the day. If you want yeah, money, then you, you, you can get away with selling drugs. You'll do no, it. I know what you're saying, and I yeah. agree with you, even though they're... All the kids, whoever watches this film, they want to listen, and I mean listen properly to what they're hearing, take a good look at what they're seeing, heed what they've heard, and hopefully none of them will go the same way that we have. Because once you get in, it's one of the hardest things to get out of drugs.
so like they're all right they're getting better and no i would with the dancers that i go to they know i've never been in a dance where there's been any trouble or anything so they were right, I enjoy myself. I'm a person, I don't really get to go out that much. So when I do go out, I enjoy myself. Some girls go out with men because they're making their money and they can give them stuff. But I'm not one of the people that will have a man that just well, all right, go out with and look at drug dealer just because I know they can buy me a car or they can do this. I'm not like that. If I meet a man and I like him and he's selling drugs, what can I do? But try to encourage him not to do it. But I know how the system is. You know what I mean? I know how this is about. At the end of the day, they get used to the big money. You're not going to get them kind of money working nine to five. You're not going to get it, not at all. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lie. Obviously, me as a female, me being with this guy, I'm going to get used to that money too. young people out there and when you hear they're in certain, involved in certain things you think oh my god I've known them from the baby like babies like my daughter certain things would stop you from going out and stay in your house like a hermit like you know you've got to go out and enjoy yourself you just don't mix with certain people or I don't know it doesn't really matter with who you mix with really because you could be just standing right next to somebody and then a gun could go off and it hits you, so, you, you know. No, I'm kind of happy to be a female right about now, because I know if I was a man, I would be in the life, I would be, like, living the lifestyle they're living, the drugs, and I know I would be. Because if I was, if, like, I'm the same age now, but I'm just in a male body, I'd be living the lifestyle. Anyway, I'm kind of happy. All I could do is have babies. <laughs> 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 but I was like, I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't know why it's like this. At the end of the day, I feel like the police are saying, oh, let them get on with it. They're killing their one another. Let them get on with it. So many murders and none of them, a lot of them hasn't been solved. Yeah, even so. Yeah, why so, did they even bother with it after you know, the last week? I think the worst murder that's been over the last few years is the little girl in Tensorize, the seven-year-old, I feel. I think that opened people's eyes. And I think a lot of these people that have been shooting people will think about that child and say, no, it's a life is a life. Money ain't nothing, you know? I don't know. But at the end of the day, her father was a drugs dealer, and all, that's all that was flashed. Yeah, drugs that's dealer. That's all they said. Rare, rare, rare. You know, they couldn't say his, her father was killed, and rare. he was a known was drugs drug dealer. dealer. He drug was drug shot dealer. the year before, and all these bad things keep coming out about this man when, okay, he's a big man, he died, he knew what he's doing, but the little girl, that is what is sad. That is sad. Mm. I think that one should be solved, but whether it gets solved, it'll probably just be like all the rest. <laughs> government really want to cut this problem they have to put plans in place they can't just knock down a tower block and spend 50 million they need to spend 50 million maybe with the people improving their, their standards of life and improving their education prospects mm. I watched a documentary on it and people that drink and drive and what they used to do was that like after road accidents they used to take people that constantly drank and drive to like mortuaries and like make them see like what like people look like after they've been knocked over and they should do the same with black boys. They should take them to go and see what people look like when their brains are blown out and see how fast they'll, they'll pick up a gun. What do you reckon it's going to take to get some of these youths to put down the gun? I think a good e education really, like, because most of the black kids, they just get dashed out of school early, like, nothing to do with your time. You just end up with too much time on your hands. That's when you start doing madness. That's what happens. What? You, you think the school is to blame in some way? Totally, that's the core of it. Cause you're out on school, you're out, out on road from a young age. So, so, so all you know is road. Is that is that what happened to you? 
I got dashed out of school and all I knew was road. A lot of teachers ain't really got it. They're, they're just there to teach and they're not really there to communicate or get to know anyone. They're just getting me just there to teach. Read the piece of paper. Yep, yeah, you've got to do this. They don't get to know the people that's getting me. They should really get to know the people that they're working with. One of the teachers looked at Dutch and, and said basically, he's never going to become anybody. And from the moment that was said to Dutch, he gave up. Kids need to be inspired. No matter what colour, creed or background, they need it. They need inspiration in their life. They need hope and they need to have their dreams. And a lot of them haven't got any. And once you take that away, there's nothing for them. So of course, all they've got left is the violence. The roads are bringing up our young black boys and that's, that's all they know is the streets. No, no, they don't know anything else. And the ones that do know, like, education is the way and I'm going to try and do this things this way, it don't pay. they're being straight, like, they doesn't pay they're, enough, they're, yeah. their enough downfall money. is the boys that I have been brought up by road though, because think, we're like, stereotyped yeah. like so badly, yeah. you know what I mean, a black guy can walk into like, you know, an interview, like a group interview and he's just not getting a job, he's just not getting it, he's just, no matter how good he is, he's not getting it. Yeah I know, that's how I tell him to come get it, you don't want to go up there. I've got good qualifications, but it's just it's just so long, like trying to get a good job, like <laughs> and getting like good pay or something like that. It's just, it's just so long. I have got five A's and three B's, but, but hey, thanks for that. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. I'm just finding it difficult. I'm handing in my CV, like, and I'm seeing people. I'm coming up to like managers, like if I even talk about English, yeah, and like they've got jobs, like, and I'm just handing it in, and they're saying, oh, there's like vacancies here, and I'm not getting a job. I'm thinking like that's a bit mad, but like, what do you have to do to get a good job, like, or get a job, like, full stop? The, the thing that we're just like bad influence or like we'll scare away customers or something like so they wouldn't want to give us jobs and stuff. Because I remember when, when I was 16 you try to go around getting jobs it's, everyone says like oh equal opportunities um, like whatever race or whatever like if you're if you're if you're under eating these even though it's less paid it still give you a chance yeah but like the way I see it in like whenever, when, when I was at that age it was all the girls like like black girls as well but it's mainly the girls that were getting jobs none of the guys were getting jobs because they see you and they, they think oh, okay the interview well, you see that's it job. with you you now you look you've got so a nice more uh, sample down to the bigger man you get me and do what you have to do I've got my GCSEs, I'm doing, I'm going to college, I'm going, I'm, I'm doing uni now, yeah. but I'm just saying that's how it was. Some people, like, people's having babies at young ages, like, and they need to provide for their family and stuff. If they can't get a job, then what can they do? They have to, like, find other ways to do it. Some people, like, some places, retailers, wherever it's retail, whatever job it is, they, they have bad experience with a couple of black people, and then they, like, kind of put, put that pigeon hole on all of them. But then again, you're going to have the same, like, bad experience with white people, whatever. It's just they don't, like, see as much. They automatically think, oh, he's a black person that done that. And then they don't kind of give next people a second chance. I can't go nowhere. All my time, I'm old school. Yeah, I've been in and out of prison. Yeah, right? I, I spent, what, 11 years in jail, come out from the, um, um, eight, like eight and a half, yeah, and, and then I come out. And when I come out and I see all the changes, it's, I see the government is trying, but not, we are not doing much to just go down with the flow. You get me? Because with black people, we don't like go out on the flow. We just go and do everything. That's on, like, we get greedy or something, we'll fight each other, or we'll do some foolishness like that. And they make the, the white people say, yeah, you see, we told him so, like, they're all like that. You get me? Mm -hmm. and that for, for me, I will hope, like the black people will show the, the, the all the other people, the black or the white people or all that, the government, that we can do better than that. Yeah, I vote for the future. I know what I want to do. I know I want to get my job. I want to do like my music and stuff as well, my sports. And I want to do like, get like, a job if I can't do that, because I'll do that no matter what. But for certain people, I know it's different because everyone's got a different situation when they're growing up and that, so. I hope for myself, like certain next people, I hope, like I hope for them it goes you right, but it doesn't always, so. <laughs> It's all right us saying that education is the way for black people, but if you've got black youths that before the age of 18, they've been um, put in, maybe put in youth detention centres, when it does come to apply for a job and they've got maybe a drug conviction behind them, they're not going to get the job. And therefore, it leaves the, the future a bit bleak for them. And a lot of boys that you speak to that do illegal activities, They'll always turn around and say to you that the streets are not nice and if I could get a job, I'd get one. Yeah. And they, they are, they do tend to be hardworking guys. Because if you wake up at nine and you can turn off your phone at ten, you're a businessman. 
And you're definitely hard working if you're up every day and out on the street by nine o'clock. Black people, as positive examples of representatives of the human family, are absent in the national curriculum. So a lot of the black boys, they don't have anything to even found this notion of a positive black male presence. It's not there. As you know, black boys, they don't really have role models that they could actually use and someone they could look up to. You can go to, speak about your problems, you know, things like that. But if you had someone, like, I had someone like that in school, my business, te my business um, studies teacher, yeah. it was a black guy called Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. And he, I don't know, gave us, like the black boys, an extra push anyway. And we all, we all looked at him as sort of like a, a role model at the end of the day. And because of him, we wanted to do good. I had him as a teacher as well, a business, business studies teacher as well. And he did, you know what I mean, paid a lot of attention with the black kids as well. And I believe that's why I passed business studies, definitely. I reckon that for black kids, for black boys especially, to make it in school, you need more black teachers, male yeah, teachers. Yeah, like school school about black 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 man, because black black think white about it, think about it. Yeah. No, school is not about black or white. Thing. No, it's it's school is not about black or white. It's, it's about broadening your horizon, exactly. man. There's certain things you need to know. There's certain things you need to know yet to get to a certain place in life, man. Exactly. If you no, go, you if you walk into a bank now, yeah, you're looking for a job, yeah, you sound like an idiot. No one's going to take you, man. You right. get me? Well, for you to be comfortable in the school, you have to be comfortable at home. Yeah, most families today don't last for more than five years. They split up, you know, the mum goes their way with the kids and the dad yeah, goes their own yeah, way. Yeah. That already leaves I'm something so psychologically yeah, in the kids' yeah, brains yeah. already. Then they have to now take that to school and deal with peer pressure from other kids as well. Now that then builds up this image of, I'm a bad man. Do you know what I'm saying? That's like a, something to protect yourself with at the end of the day. The first place that all of this needs to start is within the home. And that may yeah. be the presence of a black man within, within black women's lives yeah. when they're bringing up sons. Yeah. Because you know what, the only thing about that now, though, is that definitely needs to start happening, but I think everybody's just too relaxed with like, the fact that like there's not a black that man that's around, yeah. you know uh, what I mean? I have a, I've got yeah. two kids, my baby father's not around, yeah. uh, and that's just how it goes, and it's, it's almost like the norm to be it. like that. It shouldn't be, but yeah. the positive side of things is, you know, a lot of black women today are strong and can bring up their children on their own, and it's been done. There's definitely a shortage of... Decent, decent black men. Black men yeah. There's definitely a shortage of it. And we can say that women are to blame and maybe their fathers are to blame, but there's definitely a shortage of them. If you are going to see yourself as some kind of positive presence in a racist society, where are you going to get that positivity from? Where is it going to come from? If we agree that it doesn't come from the national curriculum, which is the primary site of how our youths are socialised, because they are generally in the care of school teachers more than they are of parents. We need to really think about that. They have more one-to-one -one contact with school teachers often than they do with their own parents for various reasons. Now, if they don't get empowered from there, where are they going to get this sense of self-worth and self-esteem from? So in some ways, it's almost like they flip the coin over and say, see the bad man there, everybody respect them. I want to be a bad man or I want to be a gangster or I want to be a drug dealer. But the sad thing is, most of them don't have no idea what that life really entails. They have no idea what road they're really walking down. Then sings my soul, my Savior to thee. How great the Lord, how great the Lord. I think over like maybe when it first started, it was a lot to do with drugs, but I think nowadays it's more to do with it's even a respect element. It's if a boy power. looks at you, yeah, if a boy yeah, yeah, if a boy right. looks at you, if you're in a rave and a boy steps on your foot and then says what? He might not make it home that night. That's the reality of it. It may be that like maybe like by having a gun or whatever, like black men could be regaining some of the power that they lost, like by not having a job, by not like doing well in school and maybe feeling and in control for once yeah. in their situation I, th I don't generally think anybody really wants to kill somebody mm. i think it most of the time it's just a front i've just got to do this for the respect that i'm gonna get from other people because i generally know guys that have done terrible things and just not wanted to do it but felt that they had to do it because of the circles that they're in black boys in that you know like in that culture whatever they, they've lost respect for their lives and then they project that onto the other men 
within that circle and think their life's worthless, so killing them is nothing. They're just another, I don't know, another nigger or whatever, another friend, just, do you know what I mean? Because that's how they see themselves. They've got, you know, they see themselves. Low self-esteem. Low yeah. self-esteem, and it projects, so it's just another, another, you know, another black person, like what they see themselves. If you can't see much self-esteem or self-worth in yourself, and then you, how are you going to see that in someone else? No, what happens is you see that person as less than sometimes, which is why it's so easy for you to kill them. If you ask some of these youths, don't you realise if you shoot someone in the head, it's not like a cartoon, they're not coming back. They don't even really consider that a lot of the time. They have such low self-esteem and such a low idea of what it is to be black and valued that it explains why there is this propensity to violence. It's total self-destruction. You've got quite a few arms there. How many guns in total does your firm have? Maybe three, four, each baby. You buy them like trainers. Like one day you might have done something with one, dash that away, anything. One of the principles that I grew up with in South Central was you never pull a gun on anyone and not use it because you're pretty much guaranteeing your death next time they see you. So I can pretty much see that those same types of principles are developing in the streets here. Look at sometimes the history of murderers or people who murder people, they will tell you, once you've killed the first person, it's like stepping on an ant. What do you think about the killings that's happening? I don't really care about anybody else except me and my man. I don't care about the problem. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Oh, what a weird Oh, what a morning. All right. So to me and I don't How many people have to die? How many people have to get hurt? What, what, what when, do you know what I mean? When's it, when's it gonna all stop? What, do you know, it's all right saying, oh, the community, we need to get together, you know, rah, 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 we're not getting together. We're not really doing anything about it. Can we have some help, please? Can we have some help now? In the 60s and whatever, the government knew what was going on in America, what was happening to the people. Laws didn't get changed until they got together and said it has to change. And if they didn't, it would cause, you know, it, you know, it cause riots. enough, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in this country, it but takes what, riots. You know, Sorry, Brixton riots. Yeah, it, it takes, takes riots for there to be change. It together the before there's change. When something major them, happens... They like it happening. The government know, they knew before that it was going to get, like, out of hand. This could have been prevented easily. Oh, easily. And America's it's, an example. Exactly, yeah. but we need to take charge ourselves and... You know. But that's part of the problem as well. I think black people are a little too relaxed about things yeah. because they're saying, you know, like, you were saying that, like, they don't get, like, help maybe after someone's murdered. Mm. Like, but they could ask for a lot more things. They need to, like, they're saying they want all these things. They need to kind of push people. They need to kind they of push for it. They need to be a bit more yeah. assertive. Yeah. Like, all right, yeah. fair enough, your son's been murdered, but, like, you know, it's not, oh, go home and be but sad. You have to, you have to, like, really, really, like, really, really fight but about it. Why, why should, why should, like, other people, like, I don't know, the police and whatever start taking an interest in like how many people are getting murdered when we're not really showing that we're interested in it. We can present more positive examples of ourselves because white society is not going to do that. They're not going to commission us to do things that are empowering or uplifting. We have to do that ourselves.
my son being shot in his face. I was there when the gunman put the gun to his face, shot him. And then he put the gun right here and shoot out my eye. You see, war is not the answer. For only love can I'm playing this game to that. I don't want to die. I want to try and have kids for that. I don't want to die. You get me? I want to live a life. To bring some love and get here today. Pick it light. Sides. Don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me so you can see. Travel, put on the system, my waist is battled. Trying to stay true to your mind, body, and soul. Still got a firm hold in the shitty, gritty, cold streets of London City. My people down with me, cause they know what it's like growing up to be subjected to the stereotype. Cause there's no choice, many physically scarred, unable to speak their voice. Lay low, cause the streets are on fire. People walking around, lost in desire. Thinking about right now, from what's in your pocket to what's up in your house. When you're driving your car, you're getting dragged out. See how nuts it gets. Disrespect makes me get vets. Stick to the subject. I haven't had enough yet. So I said, son, I know we're living in perilous times. Let the easy man skizzy just walk on by. 